Sports fans, it's me, Sportsman Z, Bob Zolke. And today, I am here to announce a new project of mine that I'm working on. I've been starting it, and I didn't want to announce it until I was fairly sure that I was going to go through with it, um, you know, keep working on it and everything. But now, with the whole thing that's going around, and you know what I'm talking about, um, the season is now being delayed, and that'll give me plenty of time to work on this project. And what I'm doing is, I'm taking the Stratomatic baseball game from, you know, the current year, the one that was sent out, and I am modifying the game to be... Um, to reflect, um, to try to predict how next year is going to go. And so, um, obviously, one of the things you have to do if you're going to do something like that is I had to put the, pl the current players on their current teams. So, for like the White Sox, that means I moved Grandall from Milwaukee to the White Sox. I, uh, I moved Encarnacion from the Yankees to the White Sox. I, um, let's, you know, pretty much, you know, the other guys that have been traded, like Gio, Gonzalez, um, and, um, and Keuchel. I put all of them on the White Sox. And then I had to make players that, um, you know, that didn't have cards at all that are going to be on the White Sox. I'm using the White Sox as an example, but I did this with every team. Um, so, like, for instance, I had to make um, Lewis Robert. I had to... Um, I had to finagle the stats for um, Mendick because Mendick was in the non-carded players group. So I moved him to the White Sox actual roster, and then I increased his um, at-bats and playing time to reflect what's probably going to happen this year. Um, and I did the same thing. I had to make Madrigal, so I made Madrigal. So I'm going to do that with every team. Um, going through making the new players that are going to be on the team this year or are expected to be on the team this year. Um, and fine-tuning the players, changing the statistics accordingly for players that, um, that didn't play that much last year, but will this year. A good example of that would be on the Orioles, um, Austin Hayes. Austin Hayes, again, last year, he had a card, and he had, like, 68 at-bats, so I just modified his card to increase his statistics, um, both the way they look and the way they would be reflected in his card. So, um, I want to say, though, and I also did, I went in and I had the computer make a new schedule for this year, which... Um, reflects, I think, only 148 games. I told the computer I just want to play 148 games instead of 162. Um, I don't even know if they'll get 148 in, but, you know, it's 148 instead of 162, so it's more realistic. Um, but it's an imperfect system. There's a lot of things that are not going to be reflected, like, for instance... There are going to be guys that come up for every team uh, from the minors that may actually play quite a bit that I would have no idea that they're going to be in the team's plans or that they, you know, that they come up. So, like, um, uh, for instance, like a guy like Skoll on the White Sox. He came up, he had 60 at-bats, 80 at-bats, something like that, Matt Skoll. Well... If we, I had done this last year, there's no way I could have predicted Matt Skoll would have had any playing time. So I can only predict, got like, you know, um, surefire guys that you know are going to be on the team, like Lewis Robert, you know, the whatever other teams Lewis Robert is. Um, so I can, I can kind of figure guys out like that, but, you know, when it comes to people like Matt Skoll, I'm not going to know. So... 
Um, so guys like that are going to get real playing time in the real league, and they're not going to be in my league. They're not going to be in my sim league. Question you got, mm -hmm. Which team do you play for? Well, I, I'm a peach. Well, I was just wondering, because I couldn't figure out why you would throw home when we've got a two-run lead. Uh, the other thing that, unfortunately, I really can't, I mean, I could change it, but it would really be a nightmare to try to go through and change it, is when I had the computer make the schedule, it scheduled uh, interleague games against the other, the commensurate division in the other league. So the East will play the East, the Central will play the Central, and the West will play the West. Now that's good and bad. It's good because you're going to still get the rivalry. So the White Sox are still going to play the Cubs, the Mets are still going to play the Yankees. The Angels will still play the Dodgers. The bad thing about it is that this year, for instance, the AL Central plays the NL West. They don't play the NL Central. So those are going to be games that aren't actually being played this year. Like when we play Cincinnati and we play um, the St. Louis Cardinals in my sim league that that won't really happen this year because we don't play the central but uh another good thing about that is that there aren't a lot of um interleague games especially when you knock the schedule down from 162 to 148. so the influence that those games will have um will be minimal and like I said, you know, like we're playing the Central. Well, among playing the Central, we're playing the Cubs, which we will play anyway. And, you know, like the um, the um, AL West is not playing the NL West. But the Angels will play the Dodgers, which they would have done anyway. So once you weed out the cross-league, interleague rivalry, um, it's... Um, there's only, it's only a handful of games. So the difference that it's going to make in the actual schedule is, uh, or from the, the deviation from the regular schedule, the real schedule is probably not going to be that big. So that's kind of good, but, you know, I mean, you, you got to do what you got to do. But, I, you know, I, there's no way I was going to go into the schedule and look at each game like where the White Sox plays St. Louis and then say, okay, instead of St. Louis, I want to make this San Diego and then go in and then know that I didn't make that mistake with Kansas City and I didn't have Kansas City playing San Diego at the same time I've got the White Sox playing them. So, I mean, I wasn't going to get into all that. Um, if you've ever tried to make a schedule, you know what I'm talking about. I just had the computer make the schedule, and thank God it made a schedule where each division plays across the interleague against the other, the same uh, geographic division. Because that solved a lot of, you know, that uh, made it a lot easier. So that's what I'm going to do. I'm working on that. Right now, I, I, I've moved most of the players I'm going to say most of the players, I because I've moved the ones that I've known about. Um, I'm not going to sit here and tell you that when the sim comes up and I'm ready to sim the season, you're going to see that every player is on the correct team. The big name players are definitely going to be. And there's some minor name players that are also going to be on the correct team. Because as I'm going through the roster and tweaking guys' stats... And, um, you know, and, and making new guys and putting the new guys on the teams. I'll look at players and I'll say, you know, is that guy on the team? You know, and then I'll see and then maybe he's not. I look on um, MLB.com and I'll see if maybe he's not really on the team anymore. But like the big name players like Keuchel, the Keuchels and the Grand Dolls. I think I got all those guys moved to the right team. So right now I'm going through the rosters. I'm tweaking the, the player stats. Um, most players I'll leave the way they are. For instance, Grand Doll. I didn't change Grand Doll at all. He, got, he has a full-time playing card. 
He had good statistics last year, which I expect him to put up again. So I didn't change Grandall, you know, in the least. Same thing with Encarcion. I did not change Encarcion at all in the least. Uh, he's probably going to do about what he did last year. No reason to change him. But for instance, Dylan Cease, I did increase Dylan Cease's innings to, I'm, I'm not going to say a, like a really a full year, like 200. 20 innings, I didn't do that, but but I did give him like something like 160 innings or something like that because I think that's going to happen. Um, some players that have shown in um, training camp that they've, uh, or you know, in spring training that something's happened and they're going to play better, like for instance, Chris Davis. I didn't make Chris Davis great, but I made him better than he was last year because all the reports, I you know, I live in, in Maryland, so I get a lot of, you know, I watch a lot of the Orioles um, talk shows and where they talk about the Orioles. And, um, and from what I could see, it looked like potentially Chris Davis is going to have a good year this year. Well, uh, not a good year, or maybe not a good year, but he should be better than he was last year. So I, for instance, with Chris Davis, I made his card better than it would be or better than it was last year. So I tried to, you know, use common sense and make little changes that we can expect so that the simulation is as realistic as possible. And once I'm done doing this, the hope is what I'm going to do is I'm going to just run simulation, 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 quick sim. I'm going to sim the season quick, write down, you know, um, take note of the statistics, the standings, and I'm going to do that quite a few times and then come out like after maybe 20 simulations, I'm going to add up the 20, you know, the 20 records um, throughout the season for every team and then try to come up with a composite standings based on 20 simulations. Which is good because, you know, you're going to get cards that are going to overperform and they're going to underperform and then they're going to hit in the middle right about where they should. And um, when that happens, you know, you're going to, you can probably rely on, you've got some decent statistics to, uh, you know, um, to reflect what, what the players might do. So I'm hoping that that, um, I mean, I, I don't see a reason why I can't have that up by you know well well before opening day have that done because we don't even know when opening day is going to be and it might be late may so i could certainly have this done by late may um so that's my project uh, what do you guys think you like the idea um any ideas that you have for me for things that i should keep in mind things that i might have to look at um, look out for um, there's you know because it's been some teams have been a challenge like Boston Boston has like you know uh, Eduardo Rodriguez in their rotation and then like four angry Cub Scouts so I have to figure out who's Boston's rotation is going to be and uh, so you know, that's tough. But any advice that you guys have, I know that this was long-winded. I know that I went on and on and on, but I... At no point in your rambling, incoherent response were you even close to anything that could be considered a rational thought. I really wanted to explain the project and how I'm doing it and let you guys know, um, you know, how it's going to be done so that if you have any advice for me, you can help me out with that. Um, if you see any pitfalls that you think, um, I should avoid, you know, by doing something, that would be great. Um, again, it's not going to be totally scientific, um, uh, because it is going to, um, you know, we're, we're not going to play absolutely every game that, um, we will in real life. Like we're playing Cincinnati. We're not going to play Cincinnati. But anything you guys can uh, do to help me out, that would be greatly appreciated. But right now, it's me, Sportsman Z, Bob Zolke, signing off. Got to get back to my project.